Yo, Eviscerate got to level 3. Pog. Almost mastered Warmaster for Balthus to get that ability. I don't, I don't remember what ability it was. I think it was a good ability that Kaspar got, though. And then uh, Warm, or, uh, Dark Knight almost on on Ferdinand. Looking forward to see what you get at max level for that. The Inexhaustible. Also got a Cadmo Shield. Arrow of Indra. This is a magic thing, right? Yeah, it uses the unit's magic stat. Who's seeing the Ajatant follow-up is pretty interesting. Axes are basically irrelevant to me. Nullifies Armored Effect. So, if I put this on Edelgard, she's not weak to armor-piercing stuff anymore, right? That's how this works? The wording of this is always so weird to me. It says nullified armor effect. Which, like, when it says nullifies effectiveness against armored units, in my brain, I think, like, so that means when I hit armored units, I'm no longer effective against them. And I know it means the opposite of that, but just the way it's worded, it, like, it hurts my brain. But we put this on Edelgard, obviously. I think she's the only armored unit I use, really. A sacred weapon attuned with the Crest of Indec. Boosts all healing effects if the wielder bears the matching crest. Well, not gonna have the matching crest, but I'm probably gonna slap this bad boy on, uh... Shamir doesn't have a crest, right? So it, like, it hurts Shamir if she has this, so I'll have to give it to... I thought the Inexhaustible, because it was silver, wasn't one of the hurting ones. This is a sacred weapon, not a hero's relic, right? Sacred weapons are fine. I feel like I used the Inexhaustible in my Golden Deer playthrough because you get it from the turtle, right? Didn't I give it to Shamir in that playthrough? Can Shamir use this, chap? Sacred weapons don't hurt. They're fine. Okay, yeah, it's only Heroes Relics that hurt. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to slap this on Shamir, and then if we can S-rank that other mission to get that gold bow, I'm going to slap that on... on, uh... Bernadetta, because I'm pretty sure I gave the inexhaustible to Shamir in that playthrough I did. Chad is saying that Bernie benefits from the crest, so maybe I should give it to Bernadetta instead of Shamir and give the gold one to Shamir, maybe? But the gold one might be a sacred weapon that is like, it has to be a crest person. We'll, we'll see. I, I think I'm going to try and S-rank that uh, paralog like right into the start of this chapter to get that other bow. And then we can look at the both of them and decide. I never expected we'd have our hands this full after returning from Fargus. Still, we've managed to quell the turmoil and maneuver our way back to Enbar. Due to the valiant efforts of Count Berglis and his Aryan Road garrison, the kingdom's counteroffensive has hardly put a dent in the Western lines. I wager the reinforcements reached them in time. It's a good thing we do not have to maintain a large military presence in Leicester. But of course, that was Her Majesty's plan all along. We'd be up to our shoulders in trouble if we hadn't settled hostilities with the Alliance. Do you think people in the Empire will be alright? I'm worried about the Opera Company, of course, but I'd also be devastated if anything happened to my friends in the capital. The end result of all this? was the complete expurgation of the Empire's remaining dissidents. <laughs> In a way, we should be thanking them for handing us this opportunity on a gilded platter. Adrestia deserves some stability for a change, so I think it's good that Her Majesty has total power now. With the opposing nobles wiped out, it's a breath of fresh air after the way things were under the old Emperor. Lynn, think about who's here. It is all right, Dorothea. I have moved on. It's funny, though. I was sure my father would take part in the rebellion, but he just didn't. I mean, I feel like all he ever did was complain about Her Majesty, you know? I guess he was so scared of the church that he decided to stay holed up in Garrick Mach. What is our next action, Lady Edelgard? If we are returning to the Western Front, I will have preparedness. Fighting your own people sure takes the thrill out of battle. So let's go wall up the kingdom instead and put an end to all this. Who's with me? All that remains is for Adrestia to claim victory. And along those lines, I wish to present an idea. One last stratagem to ensure that we prevail. We were successful in striking down Cronia at Fort Mercius. I'm really interested to see how this is going to go, because they're like, just one more push and we take out the kingdom and we win. 
but like Edelgard wants all of Fodlin united. So I think she does still want to take over the Leicester Alliance. And I really just don't trust Claude to sit back and be like, yeah, we can be like friends or whatever now that you've crushed the kingdom. Like, Claude has to have something going on, probably involving Almira, that's going to hit up. So, like, we're going to have to deal with that. And then we still have more of those who slither in the dark. We got to take care of Solon, and we have to take care of, uh, whatchamacallit, of Talus. And we still have to deal with Rhea and the Knights of Saros. I don't think we're going to have a chapter that knocks out Dimitri and all of the kingdom and Rhea at the same time. That just seems like a mistake to me if they were like, oh yeah, one chapter, we're gonna have you not only fight Dimitri and that would involve Dudu and Felix, etc., and and Sylvain and beat all of them in one chapter. And also in that same chapter mission, you're gonna deal with Catherine and I don't know who they have other than Catherine, Aseteth, Flane, and Rhea all at once. That seems like two distinct chapters to me. So kind of making my assumption now, I think we've got Probably like four chapters left. We have a chapter to deal with Dimitri and the remaining Blue Lions. We have a chapter to deal with Rhea and the remaining Knights of Saros. Yes, Cyril chat just reminded me. He still exists. A chapter to deal with Rhea and the remaining Knights of Saros. A chapter to deal with the Alliance. Maybe even two to deal with the Alliance. Because I really think Dimitri... Or not Dimitri. I really think Claude is going to turn on us at some point and try and like... Like maybe right after we beat the Kingdom, he's like, Alright, now attack while they're weakened from fighting Dimitri or something like that. And then a chapter to deal with the remaining Slitherers in the Dark. So, if all four of those are at least one chapter, we've got four chapters left. That'd be 14, 15, 16, 17? 17 would be a little low. I wouldn't be surprised if those who Slither or the Alliance both have an extra chapter on top. To get it up to like 18 or 19. But uh, we'll see how it plays out. However, Lord Arendelle, which is to say Talus, remains at large. And any schemes Solon may be plotting are so much conjecture in the wind. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Solon and Talus are two separate chapters for each of them. Still, his efforts in Hrim territory effectively empowered the late Duke Iyer to stage a coup. Whatever the case, he must have a very good reason for seeking to prevent the kingdom's fall. But why would they help the people who are harboring the Archbishop? It makes no sense. Unless their aim is simply to prevent the war from ending by any means possible. We know the Kingdom's court mage, Cornelia, is connected to those who slither in the dark. They may have planted other associates in Fargus as well. If they already have the King's court dancing on strings, it stands to reason they would focus their attention on obstructing the Empire. I agree the theory hangs together. But does that mean we should expect more interference? We should, your majesty. Though I would at least like to think they no longer have anyone left who can act brazenly in the open. And need we worry about our mercenary friend? I was under the assumption that they had your implicit trust. Absolutely, but not enough to purge all of the doubt from my heart. I once trusted my uncle, as well as the late Duke Iyer, and he wasn't even replaced with a doppelganger. People who come in contact with those who slither in the dark are not the same afterward. How am I to trust anyone in a world where such a thing can happen? I do not disagree, Your Majesty. Yes, well, we must remain vigilant until the war is over for good and all. Although I wonder if we can rest easy even then. It's hard being the Emperor. We still don't really know much about Solon, Kranya, and Talus. Not gonna be learning much about Kranya at this point. I was thinking this would be a chance to learn about my power, or who you actually are. But, oh well. Oh well. Is that all you have to say for yourself? I mean, I'm still curious, but my attention right now is on the battles ahead. And hey, it's not like knowing the truth would change much for you anyway. Even if I am related to those slithering people somehow, it's not like I'd want to split up with you. That's music to my ears. It's incredible to see just how fast you've matured. Makes me proud to call you my partner in destiny. <laughs> Is this what being a parent feels like? Weird jump to parents, but okay. Uh, yeah, I guess. Anyway, this war will be over soon, so let's do what we've got to do to see it through together. I'll be counting on you, Arbol. Save up.
Scarlet Blaze. Torment of the Ego and Lion. Edelgard succeeds in containing Ayer's insurgency, and while she is concerned by the absence of the nefarious Tallis, she prepares her army for the next step regardless. The time is nigh to crush the kingdom and central church's growing momentum and put an end to the war once and for all. Maybe they are going to have us do Dimitri and Rhea both at the same time. I'd be a little I surprised. I here in Garrick Mark because the time has come. We are returning to the front. I, I would be a little surprised because, like, surely we fight the Immaculate One, right? I feel like any fight, if there's a, if the story chapter has us both fight and kill Dimitri and fight and kill Rhea, I feel like any fight with Dimitri as a character is going to be kind of undercut by the fact that, hey, we're fighting the frigging Immaculate One, right? Because, like, in the Black Eagles route in Three Houses, I think you fight Dimitri in the chapter and kill him with a big animated cutscene and everything right before you go beat Rhea and defeat the Immaculate One. So I would kind of expect them to do the same thing here, where you beat Dimitri in a fight and all that, Edelgard kills him, it's a big, like, emotional moment. And then you push on to, like, Ferdiad or whatever the capital is called and fight Rhea where she becomes the Immaculate One. That's what I would expect. I'd be a little surprised if they had one story chapter that was like, yeah, dude, kill them both. Especially because there would be so many units you have to fight, right? Like, we'd have to fight Felix, we'd have to fight, uh, Sylvain, we'd, unless they just throw them to the wind and like, aha, uh -huh, they didn't exist. Uh, we'd have to fight Dudu, we'd have to fight Catherine, Cyril, Seteth, Flane. That's so many characters where I assume most, if not all of them, would get murdered to be done in a single chapter compared to how they've done it so far. Been waiting to hear that forever. Let's go wreck things. For the next phase of our campaign, we'll be working with the Alliance's leader, Claude, to tighten our cordon around the kingdom. Rather than try to advance on the Western Front, we'll join forces with the Alliance and press in from the east. Anytime Claude is mentioned, I get worried. I'm like, he he's gonna pull some nonsense. I know he is. This means we'll be marching northeast from the monastery and infiltrating Galatea. I hope we can finally end it this time. I don't think I can deal with doubling back again. Agreed. This slog has slogged on long enough. Worry not, friends. I'll not be blindsided twice. I promise you that. We won't rest until all of Fodlan is united. We will fight tooth and nail for it, and we'll do so together. So, we're finally dusting off our armor and going somewhere, huh? You must really want to end this war if you're letting the two of us loose on the kingdom. Quite right, Captain Geralt. We will not accept anything less than the fall of the royal capital. You and your mercenaries will be marching with us. This is not a problem, I trust. Let's just say I have a history with someone at the capital and leave it at that. I have no idea what he's talking about. Something from Three Houses that I missed? Because I didn't do the Blue Lions route, maybe? Interesting. Ooh, or maybe you're talking about Rhea. I know you have a big deal with Rhea and all that. But if the time's come for me to sort that out, then so be it. In any case, we're ready to go. Right, kid? We'll earn our keep. Gotta say, I'm excited to be fighting with you for a change. Marvel with the dot dot dot. We made some headway on the Western Front once the Empire pulled its main force back. Felix, hear me out. Please leave Dimitri and join me, I beg. I'm gonna be so upset when the game lets me recruit Sylvain, but not Felix. What does it matter when their Minister of Military Affairs still holds Aryan Road? Even if we were in a position to keep throwing troops at those walls, we're never going to crack them. But if we keep digging our heels in here, their main force will be on us again in no time. It appears they have already dealt with the insurrection at Fort Mercius. If they don't come at us from the west, they'll soon waltz right in from the east. Might I offer a suggestion, King Dimitri? Of course, Lady Rhea. Man, when was the last time we saw Rhea in this game? Like, Chapter 5? We should retake Garrick Mark. It is the only way to reverse our current fortunes. 
Ooh, I wonder if we're gonna have a fight at Garrig Mock for this chapter where we rout like a bunch of the knights or blue lions, and then we take Ferdiad. If I call upon the church's faithful, they will come running from every corner of Fodlin to liberate the monastery in the goddess's name. With Garrig Mock under our control, we will be able to keep the Imperial Army in check. Additionally, it might convince some of the more fickle Alliance Lords to reconsider their loyalties. I mean no disrespect, Lady Rhea, but this proposal hardly seems... There is more. As you know, the Bishop of the Southern Church is currently seated at the Monastery. If we remove him, it reminds the world anew that Archbishop Rhea is the rightful head of the Church of Seros. I believe this will shake some of the more devout Adrestian lords from their Emperor's grip. While their faith may waver now, Adrestia is still the cradle of the Church of Seros. We had to have random Knight of Seros number four be the one here for this dialogue. There were no other important characters that could fill this role. There are yet many pious believers among their nobility. If we can pull them to our side, it may shift the war back in our favor. We should strike while the iron is hot. I will get the word out at once. Hold, Lady Rhea. While I now concede that your plan to retake the monastery has some merit, I must ask that you alert no one. And why not? I need only say the word, and an army of believers will flock to our cause. Yes, and the moment the enemy spies people flooding in from across Hill and Dale, they'll realize what we're planning and bolster their defenses. You believe their defenses are mightier than the faith of the people? By the goddess, have our enemies truly become so powerful? In that case, what do you propose? We entrust the eastern lines to houses Karen and Galatea, then ride in mass toward Arian Road. The enemy will think we intend to assail the Silver Maiden, but instead we break east. East? Then we'll be attacking the monastery through the Valley of Torment. I get your thinking now. If we attack from the west, Aryan Road would be at our backs, and the Empire could box us in. Very well. I have no objections. My church members will assist in guiding your soldiers through ALL. The monastery is holy and precious to us, and by the name of the Goddess, I swear, it will be ours again. Good. Then I'll ready the troops. Lady Rhea, Seteth, I place all of our futures in your hands. Very interesting. I'm really curious as to how this is going to go. Yeah, we're not even near Ferdiad for this. Ferdiad's up at the top left, isn't it? I think. We got a lot of battles to do. Also, there wasn't a very straight path there. Well, it was an insanely straight path, but I mean, uh, normally in the chapters, it's like, hey, dude, if you only want to do like two or three missions to get to the main chapter, you can. This one, it looks like you got to do like four or five of them to get to the main chapter. Oh, yeah, battle suggestions. I always forget about these. Hmm. So All right, what do we got going on? Eliminate the need for ingredients when cooking. Holy cow. I Slightly increased experience gained idea. by mounted classes. We have a lot of mounted classes. Increase the recovery effect of allied minutes. strongholds. No, that so one is immediately is out. Do not care about that. Everyone's time, but I've got an idea. Because here's what I'm thinking. I have the most Slightly increase is a low number. We only have so many mounted units. Shamir, Bernadetta, Geralt... Ferdinand. Do we have any other mounted units other than that? Lysithia, she's mounted on a on a wyvern. Uh, Petra is mounted. That's six? I might be forgetting one or two. Like, Leone is mounted, but I don't really use Leone. We only used her in a paralogue because we had to. So... That's only benefiting, like, a fourth of our units, give or take, you know? But the thing is, is like, eliminate the need for ingredients when cooking sounds really good when you say it out loud. But then I think to myself, when have I ever been worried about the ingredients for cooking outside of the first, like, four chapters? I feel like I'm loaded on stuff, and also I am I can buy stuff easily. If I'm like, oh, I need to, like, throw a bunch of money at 
at food ingredients, I'm like, oh, if I don't have the money for it, do like one auxiliary battle and then boom, buy out all of the food. So I actually feel like, although this sounds really good out the gate, it doesn't really serve any purpose. So even though slight idea. increase to like six units doesn't sound amazing, I honestly I think like started. increased recovery effect of allied strongholds is almost pointless because I almost never lose strongholds in the first place. So and ingredients for cooking not being needed time, actually sounds 100% useless too. So we're gonna go with increasing experience for mounted units. Naturally, this task falls to me. Shall we? We will proceed with this plan. I'm counting on all of you. Let's go. Gamer moment. <laughs>